you've got to think Cathy Cook might be the favourite. We can expect some fireworks though, because Chloe Dixon is not shy about letting us know exactly how she feels about each point. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, if if today's gone by, if it's going to go by anything that's happened today, there's been so many upsets. I mean, I think just to show in fencing, anything can happen. Well, it should be fairly obvious to you watching uh, back home or wherever you might be. And Kathy Cook is in that very distinctive St George's Cross mask on the left of your screens. And Chloe Dixon fighting for Scotland on the right. Both fences are a little bit uh, cagey at the beginning. They're just kind of sussing each other's, each other's rhythm and tempo out. Yeah, we go straight away, Chloe Dixon, the first fist pump there. I think we're going to see that more than once. Yeah, Again, one of those close, couple Sorry. of those close encounters. Yeah, attack, attack was no from uh, from Cappy Cook and the... And, uh, they're again just just it's, it's so important those close quarter hits you know those remise those remise hits are, are so important in fencing and, and vital so it's, it was good that she got the first score on the board. She's going to have to be good. She's doing quite well to move out of the way of uh, you know Kathy Cook's already done a couple of attacks there. Where she, uh, there you see it again, very explosive attacks. Um, and obviously quite long, she's got a long reach, but um, she's just going to have to keep her footwork there. She seems to be managing that quite well at the moment. But it is, you know, it's a long time to have to think about your footwork and to be in the fight and be concentrated for nine minutes. And tap good, finally. Hits on. Some lovely exchanges there. Chloe Dixon frustrated at uh, not winning that one. But uh, Kathy Cook levelling things up at uh, one point apiece. Is uh, quite slow. I wonder if they're going to call passivity here. No, just as I said that, Kathy Cook did a fantastic attack. Yeah, just the better way to just explain passivity to us and what that means. And it, it's very much about trying to speed the sport up and make it, you know, easier for people to get into. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, it's kind of it, it's trying to make it much more of a spectator sport. Really, is, is the whole rule of passivity. You know, uh, spectators want to see action, and, and, and so there should be. Um, so essentially they, they call passivity if there's been one minute without a hit or 15 seconds of no blade work. Um, when, they, when the referee calls passivity, both fences get a yellow card and they're taken immediately to the next round. I sometimes think um, passivity is, is quite clever. You can play it quite tactically, um, especially if you're fencing a much kind of higher ranked and, and better fencing. I've seen it before. Um, actually against a very high Chinese ranked fencer at World Cup. She was fencing a German and this German took her. They, they kept getting passivity to the last fight and it was down to the wire, down to the last hit and you know it's so dangerous when it's down to the last hit. Right, so sorry, just interrupt there. There's a, a fantastic parry across there from Dixon. She's doing very well to hold her own against someone who's a, a far more experienced fighter. Here. She is doing well, and, and you know she's do, she's playing it really well because she, she's slowing the fight down and she's she's uh, she's taking her time, and I think that's that's really important. <laughs> Lovely attack from Kathy Cook there. fans and making the stands rumble here at the Inverclyde National Sports Centre. Yeah, it's a really great atmosphere here tonight and actually as, as an athlete it's going to really be kind of uh, pushing the athletes to greater heights I think. It, it means a lot. The support is very important tonight. Got 10 seconds. I wonder if, they, if she's going to do a surprise attack. 
Just fell short there. No, that's it. Just They're going to take off. the break. Yeah. That was a fascinating first period. Very interesting stuff. Yeah, I think that they both kind of uh, play it tactically, really. That they're, they're kind of sussing each other out. Kathy, uh, numerous times, has been doing kind of uh, attacks which actually haven't been that well timed. Um, she's been caught out because she, she's attacking just short. But there again, D Dixon's used her footwork very well. Um, There's a very nice parry riposte there at close quarters, which was um, executed perfectly, actually. The timing was, was great. Uh, but Kathy, at the same time, she, she has done... When she's getting a hit on and she's getting her attacks on, those explosive attacks are absolutely fantastic. So she really needs to make sure that the distance and the timing are absolutely perfect. Then she marries those two together, um, which, you know, it's, it's not easy. But, I mean, that attack straight through the middle is just beautiful to see. It's one of my favourite things to see in fencing where actually there's no kind of blade contact. Pow! Straight explosive attack straight through the middle. It's um, actually a very hard hit to do in fencing. Is that just because you're, you're taking your opponent by surprise? Because it's yeah, so, so direct on. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And the opponent's always looking to try and pick up your blade and um, deflect your blade out of the way. So it is difficult because you have to c completely catch your opponent off guard. And you, it's not, you, can, you can't telegraph your moves. That's the worst thing you could do in fencing. And actually telegraph, not telegraph your moves is quite hard. Both fighters obviously feeling the pace a little. Yeah, I should think this might do go to th the, the full nine minutes, Nick. Just off target there. Very nice attack there again. And she's got the attack. She knows it. She's shaking her head. She's pointing her finger um, at the coach in the corner because she knows that the exact right place to hit is is just actually in, in her chest area. She's very vulnerable um, behind her guard arm, just in her chest area. And she, she's just got that perfect timing. That's the one, she's saying. Oh... That was that was good from Dixon because you know Kathy actually tried to do that same attack there again. Dixon saw it coming and she she took the parry, but unfortunately she's off target. So important in the final, in the semi-final, to get it on. Attack was direct all the way from the right. I think Kathy put that out a shout. I think it could have been hers, but to be honest, Nick, I think fences, um, you know, including myself, you you just scream instinctively because you want the hit to be yours so much. Yeah, it's that bit of kidology we were talking about yesterday as well and you're just maybe trying to sway things and whether it goes for you in that particular hit or maybe something a little further down the line you might yeah. get the benefit of the doubt. It might be that but also you know I think if you do shout for your hits it just shows that you're in the fight as well and I think you know that's meaningful in itself. Seems to be an off target like that came up before might have been um Something wrong with her weapon came up before anyone hit her blade. Seems to be okay now. We're going to carry on. So we do have this situation you were talking about where we have a, a southpaw, a lefty, fighting somebody who's right-handed. So that'll make it slightly trickier for, for Kathy Cook as well. Yeah, but I, I should think she's, she's, she's probably um, used to fencing fencing Dixon and indeed left-handers and then that was probably part of her game plan she probably didn't just walk in thinking you know it's important fencers like to know whether they're fencing a right-handed person or a left-handed person so it does make a difference really close full four Very nice uh, parry pass there. She has got a seriously long reach, Kathy Cook. <laughs> yeah, I think that was absolutely right, the, the referee's decision. The attack first started from the right. This is what we were talking about right away yesterday, Nick. 
the attack started from the right and Kathy just kind of um, did her explosive attack but at the end of the day because it started from the right it's, it's labelled a counter attack unless of course someone beats your blade like Kathy just did to stop you in your tracks in which case she regains the right of way so any deflection or any beat of the blade or if your opponent makes you fall short then that and they take back the right away. What, what a great hit from Dixon. The crowd's starting to get really heated up now. Every hit just seems to be so important in this fight. And we did see this in the earlier rounds that when she gets her nose in front, she's very difficult to catch back up again. Yeah, she is. And, you know, like any fight, if, if, if the time's running out at the end of the, the last period and, you know, you, you kind of get a couple of hits ahead, so difficult. When, when you're chasing an opponent, it's difficult. Just another little bang on the hand there, you can see. Dixon just steps back, takes a moment. She's just in the danger area that there, Dixon. She needs to stay in peace and not go off the back line, which is just the, e the end of the, the gold area there on the piece. Just saying, interestingly, Nick, earlier I was saying the back line used to be the line where they draw the line of death and if you went over it, it, w it was, you know, a lack of honour. So nowadays, if you go over the line, you lose a hit. So we've still got that history in our fencing, which is, which is nice. Yeah, I mean, so much of it, foil, foil particularly, it was the, the gentleman's weapon of the 18th century, wasn't it? And this is where the, we've got to from, from that period. So there is such a rich history of the sport as well. There is, and, and we've still got a code of honour. You know, offences have to salute each other before the offence have to shake hands. If you don't shake hands, you get card, you don't get your results. So um, it's very, very important to us to, to keep that tradition of honour going. Yeah! Lovely power of pass. Now that was executed with real composure. That really is good. And Kathy just walking to, to her line, her on guard line, with her head down a bit. Yeah, it looks like she's just wanting to take a moment, have a little think about her tactics. Is this get, not getting away from her quite yet? It's 7-4 to the Scottish fighter. Yep, she just needs to take her time and, you know, perhaps even back off, wait for Dixon to come back at her. She's been in her zone now for quite a while and she's been losing a few hits at the, in her end of the, in Dixon's end of the piece. So I wonder, actually, if she, if she should just, you know, stay back wait for Dixon to come to her and see if she can pick up a parry post before the minute break. She's still pressing. She's going to try and get one of her hits and there we go. Fantastic parry post. Cook just doesn't know what to do. She's keep, she keeps pressing and she's getting caught out with the parry post. Dixon's just drawing her attack, waiting for her, waiting for her. She just... Nineteen seconds now. Perhaps she just needs that minute break now, just to kind of uh, have a, have a chat with her coach and just reassess what she's going to do. She's still pressing. Off target. Yeah, there did seem to be that tactic straight away, which was working. Chloe Dixon's worked her out. She then just needs to. Kathy needs to to work out her opponent and, and maybe come up with something a little fresher for the mm. third the third period. You know, in, in fencing, here we go. We're going to stop for the minute break now. In fencing. It's it's it, it's so, such a difficult sport because in a fight you might have to change your tactics three, four, five, six times according to if your fencer changes their tactics. It's like this ever-evolving fight, um, hence why it's so important in the, in the minute breaks to have a chat to your coach or, or chat to yourself and try and figure out what's been happening. I remember my coach, um, Jamek Wojciechowski, Olympic coach, he used to actually stand there with a little black book and mark down exactly what the opponent, your opponent was doing, which parry she was taking, or he was taking, um, which attacks they were making. Um, and he would jot down, and he'd say, right, this, this opponent did eight step lunge attacks, or this opponent did eight counter parry pos. And he'd, he'd, he'd count it, and he'd say, right, this is, this is how many, they're. statistically, this is what they've done, this is what you need to do in the next period. And, and so it's really important to, to, to monitor that and... and Keep a lid on it, kind of thing. Yeah, I mean, breaking down the, the science of, sp of the sport, I suppose, and understanding what is, what is most likely in favoured attacks as well, I suppose, as, as well as favoured defensive manoeuvres. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, you know, fencing's not just a physical sport by any means. You know, it's, it's so mentally taxing and emotionally um, challenging as well. For me, it's one of the toughest sports. 
Well, the crowd here at the Inverclyde National Sports Centre really getting into this. They realise there's a proper fight on their hands. It's 8-4 to, to Chloe Dixon of Scotland up against Cathy Cook of England. We're into the final period now. Cappy's still pressing, but she's taking her time a bit more. That was good timing. She got it off target. She needs to get her point on. Dixon just needs to try and uh, find that comfort zone where she's just picking up her parry of post. Again, Cathy pushing her to the back line. She's not letting up. Her coach has obviously said to her, actually, you're doing the right thing, but just get your point on. Perhaps time it just a little bit better. She wants to time it and catch Dixon completely off guard. Again, Dixon yeah. still picking up over pass, you know, danger zone. She thought that was a hit there, I think. Um, just off target over Chloe Dixon. Seems to have been a long time since Cathy Cook scored a, scored a hit, but there it is. She's narrowed the gap down to three points now. Yeah, you know, and, and some would say, oh, you know, that, that was a scrappy hit. They both, you know, Cathy missed and then they're kind of scrapping about. But those are the most important hits in fencing. You've got to fight to the end. Who cares how you get the hit? Just get it on. This is it now. This is where both fences have to really knuckle down and work hard. Two minutes, 11 seconds is a long, long time. They're going to have to keep their concentration, keep their focus, sit down on their legs. Think about every single hit. Both fencing fences struggling to, to kind of get an on uh, a red or a green light. It's been off target hits now for, for quite a while. Again, just the attack be, just off target. Seem, just seems to be landing a little high, if, if anything else. Yeah, I don't know whether it, it's nerves or what. You know, perhaps Cathy's getting a bit tense and her shoulders tensing up, and it's so difficult, uh, you know, to, to, to keep the accuracy. It's so important. My coach always said, most of the time, actually, fences. He would remark that there we go to attack no and counter attack was good. But yeah, my, my coach would say a lot of the times fences actually fence 30, 40 percent of the time. It's it's uh, you know they they don't they don't get their hit on, whereas it should be about 70 percent accurate. Chloe just looks to be struggling a little bit here. Uh, Chloe Dixon on the right hand side seemed to take a bit of a blow to the knee in that coming together. A little stamp there from Chloe Dixon. We've seen that a yeah, number of occasions. She's, she's definitely frustrated. She picked up the parry, but again, it's off target. She needs to get these hits on, really does. Very fantastic, strong attack from Kathy Cook there. One of one of the best things that, you know I love about her fencing is she has such direct attacks through the middle. She just needs to get her timing spot on. Easier said than done, but this is it. This is where she has to knuckle down now and work hard for every hit. Feels like crunch time, doesn't it? Yeah, it is. Here we go, close quarters yet again. Chloe Dixon just you can just sense her frustration, hands in the air. She is certainly animated. There we go, Kathy Dixon just done a fantastic attack. Again, this is where she seems it seems to be working where Kathy's actually the distance is a bit closer. And she just nails her explosive attacks, whereas as the distance is a bit longer, Dixon can see her coming. So she just needs to keep a tighter distance, I think. Oh. It's a 
very good hit. Just when you thought the momentum was maybe swinging away from Cole Dixon. to attack, that's the second counter attack, she's missed her attack, Kathy's so frustrated now, she knows the margins are tiny, you know, she's just there, she's just falling short, but you know, she can't afford to make these mistakes and unfortunately she's probably going to have to chase a little bit now, still, a minute is a long time. Attack off target again, she's going to have to get it on. Beautifully done by Kordic. Yeah, you know, and, and again, she's on the back line. It seems to be her comfort zone right now. Uh, but Kathy, she's, she's going to have to, unfortunately, play into Dixon's hands now because she's going to have to put pressure. And um, actually, Dixon's uh, rather liking being at the back end of her piece. She seems pretty comfortable there. Here we go. She's going to yeah. apply pressure, pressure, pressure. And Dixon's going to be always looking for that parry pass. So you're going to see she's going to be trying to beat the blade, she just asked the referee if she can get a mask off, she's just going to readjust her hair, make sure it's not in her eyesight. We saw that very much in the uh, the last 16 match against Ruth Clark, another Scott that she fought. She did spend an awful long time at the back of that piece, that's obviously her, her favoured tactic. Yeah, I mean it was one of my favourite places to be, I had quite a strong parry post. I used to love drawing fences and making them think they were safe, lulling them in. And then last minute, that's a trick you've got to do, last minute parry pass. And that's it again, the same move again. Same hit, last minute parry pass, just as I said it. 13-7 then to Chloe Dixon of Scotland over Cathy Cook with just 37 left on the clock in the final period. Yeah, I suspect Cathy's going to be chasing a little bit now. She's advancing, advancing. She's going to have to be careful not to get caught on preparation or by that very quick parry pass. Final remise is off target. Attack no, Dixon. Hit is on. She's not going to miss any of these now. She's, get, she's not going to give away any presents. That was a very knowing look you just gave me there as if to say, yes, she's probably going to do that all night if she wants. Yeah, I think, um, you know, Kathy is probably going to be the same story. Kathy, oh, no, attack, attack is, is from the left and it's good. Just over 20 seconds to go, though, and it's a healthy lead for Chloe Dixon, who needs just one more point to make it to the Commonwealth final. Attack again from the left is off target. Cook seems to be timing her attacks much better now. She's just going to have to go. That's it. it. Holy Dixon absolutely screaming her delight there. She's made it through to the Commonwealth final, seeing off Kathy Cook 15 points to 8. Congratulations to Holy Dixon.